Recently I, I had a funny project because I can't stand waste. This could get in the way of making art. Artists who do giant paintings have no problem with buying giant buckets of paint and huge canvases. I, on the other hand, scrounge around and find things. And recently I made, I don't know, 75, about that many fans, handheld fans, that were created out of my husband's tossed out Raisin Bran boxes. He is an artist and he, and he is an illustrator and all of his thrown away pieces of paper where he tests watercolors and they're beautiful. They're puddles, they're splashes, they're brush strokes and they're all thrown into the recycled bin and I take them out and I cut them up and I arrange them on the Raisin Bran box and then I put them on a paint stick and I've turned them into handheld fans, a sort of symbol for global warming and getting back to manual simplicity in the good old days when people fanned themselves. I did another NRDC trip down the Yangtze and it was a very powerful trip because the river is rising from the Three Gorges Dam. It will take two more years, three more years. And I was looking for the egrets and you don't see them. And although this is the biggest man-made engineering project in the world, you think, what is happening to the biological diversity? And it took me a long time to digest that, and I ended up making pictures of the Baiji, he's called, the, the uh, Yangtze freshwater dolphin, who became extinct officially after we came back from the trip. Charming creature. You know, I found a few photographs, and that's what I ended up painting pictures of. So the hook, you know, how I become involved in making pictures is kind of an emotional hook and a way to engage people to wonder who is the charming creature, then you hear the story, and you say, oh, how could we do that? And I think that's how I've come to animals in the landscape or the waterscape, is what grabs me emotionally in the connection of the environment. Because beauty matters a great deal in moving us. I think that's always been the case for me as an artist. I have been aware of the NRDC for more than half my life. If I had a question, as a member, I would call. I would find out who is the expert on green building or tell me more about sustainability. Wonderful people would come forth. I would call and say, could somebody come and speak at an event? And endless numbers of people on the staff have convinced me that I wanted to be more and more part of the organization. Ashok Gupta is probably one of the most inspiring people I've ever met. He was affecting policy change, legislation, and then I brought some people to meet him, and he totally convinced them they wanted to make a green building, and he became a hero of mine, as is everyone at the NRDC, but that's one experience I had with a policy crafter.